Welcome back to Yankees batting practice today presented by Audi. We are happy to welcome back to the show Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders manager Doug Davis. Doug, we once again appreciate the time before your squad opens up a six game set with the Red Sox AAA affiliate. And we talked last time you were here a couple weeks back about how cool your job is to let these guys know when they're down there in AAA they, they got the call up to the big club. So what was uh, Luis's reaction when you told him? Yeah, Luis is extremely excited about this opportunity. Uh, obviously, you know, that's something for a young kid. Uh, gets his first shot, uh, shot to go to go to the big leagues and actually get a start uh, in a big league game. You know, he's extremely excited about that, that opportunity. And, and I think looking forward to the challenges that come along with it. And we've seen his growth throughout the year in Somerset, in Scranton as well. Uh, back on July 21st, six innings, he started that combined no-hitter against Rochester. What made him so successful in that start, Doug? Well, Luis just pounded the strike zone. Uh, he, he located his fastball very well. He threw sliders off of that pitch. Um, his velocity was up. He, he dominated that lineup. And, uh, you know, he went right at guys. He, he was able to manage his pitch count. And, uh, and get through six innings, which can be a little bit of a difficult thing for some of these guys because we are a little bit limited as to how many pitches that they have. But, uh, you know, he was able to stay on point and uh, each inning he sort of built off in the, net, the last one and it, and it all it just kept getting better and better. So, uh, you know, you hate taking guys out of the lineup when they have no hitters. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it, it, the circumstances dictated that and uh, it was great for the rest of the guys to be able to finish it off. Absolutely. I mean, that was just tremendous to see that. And even though it was a combined no-hitter, it's still a no-hitter. Uh, his last start, though, uh, with you against Syracuse, just one and a third, two hit six earned, four walks, and two hit batters. That's a stark comparison to that previous outing. Just what about that game had him struggle a little bit? Well, I, I think Luis, he, he hit a couple guys, um, and that seemed to throw him off a little bit. You know, he tried to make an adjustment to get back uh, – you know, not necessarily his stuff, but get back into the strike zone and be able to throw where he wanted to. And he just used up an awful lot of pitches in that first inning. Um, and then the second inning, it was kind of, a, you know, it was a similar thing. He was uh, just struggling to command that baseball. And then that's been the thing for him, uh, a young guy at this level. And, and I think those inconsistencies you see at times until they are able to, you know, gain enough experience where they're able to work their way through a game when they may not have their, their best stuff. And I think that was the case in Syracuse. Uh, he didn't have quite the stuff that he had the, uh, the outing before. And, uh, and it was a struggle for him to be able to try to adjust and get himself uh, situated. So it was a short one. But uh, again, I think, you know, because of his age, you know, you're going to see that with the inconsistencies. And I think tonight he's raring to go. And he's going to, as long as he stays in the strike zone, he's going to be very effective. Yeah, he, he's he's pretty much raring to go wearing those Yankee pinstripes for the first time. You could guarantee that. But, Doug, what did you tell him? What advice did you impart with him before he left to come up and play with the Yankees based on those last two starts that he had with you, especially being that he's a young kid? What did you tell him? What advice did you give him? Well, I think the, the biggest message was that, you know, you just continue to do the things that you've done here. But it was all about preparation. Um, all of these guys are here preparing on a daily basis for for a call, you know, and then we go through stretches where those calls come quite often. Um, so I, I think that was the biggest message to him was just you're prepared for this. Uh, you've been preparing for it this whole season, whether it be in uh, double A or triple A. And, uh, you know, now you're just going to a different level. You're still facing the same hitters. Uh, you just need to continue to go out there and do the things that you normally do and, and prepare for the game. And he's going to have a ton of help there. Uh, we know that. And he's going to rely on that help. And I think that's going to be a, a big thing getting him through this game tonight. Doug, he has an electric fastball. We've seen it down in Scranton with you. What, what else does he feature and what could Yankees fans expect? Give us a little scouting report on him. Well, he, he does have an electric fastball, and, and he's able to, uh, you know, pitch up in the strike zone. He's able to command it at the bottom of the strike zone, and I think that's one thing that if, if he's doing that, uh, that's going to set him up to, then to go to a slider, which the slider's been a little bit of a work in progress for him, but it continues to improve and get better. Uh, the command and location of that pitch is a big thing for him. Um, and then over, I would say, the last three weeks, uh, his changeup has gotten remarkably better. Uh, he's been able to use that pitch. Uh, it's got a little bottom to it. 
uh, it, it's still firm because he throws his fastball firm. I mean, it's going to be a, a high 80s, low 90s changeup. But uh, with the action that he gets on that pitch, it'll help, I think, help him face some of those left-handed hitters and, and the guys that will get off that fastball.